Wow, look at that. Four white Honduran bats. They're actually a species of tent-making bats. You can see they've actually cut in to allow the leaf to fold down over them. It's creating their tent. And that allows them to actually remain there hidden through the course of the day. Incredible, but this is not the species I'm after today. I'm after a species of snake that actually lives up in the canopy, just like these guys. He's called the eyelash pit viper. This snake lives through Central America into Northwest South America. And to find one, I have to go on foot through their ideal habitat of low elevation rainforest. Now the eyelash pit viper, just like those bats, they'll be up around head height, but they'll be wrapped around the branches of the trees and they'll be remaining in an ambush position. So I'm just looking around head height on the tops of palms on the branches for our snake. Oh, frog. Oh, he's just hopping. That there is the green and black poison dart frog. That bright coloration is a warning sign to any predators that are out and about, saying, if you eat me, I'm extremely poisonous. So it's this frog species that's actually in the group of the most poisonous species of frogs in the world. If I were to lick that frog, it would certainly cause major complications, but definitely if you were a lizard or a snake or a bird that wanted to eat this frog, it would almost certainly cause death. Okay, let's keep looking for our target species, the eyelash pit viper. Happy hunting, mate. Woo! Look at that. That there is what we're after. It's called the eyelash pit viper. He gets his name. If you just look on the top of that head there, they've got this kind of ridges. It makes him look like he's got these eyelashes. You can see this tail here is allowing the snake to get a perching point, a prehensile tail grabbing onto that branch. And that is an adaptation for this snake to be able to live up in the trees. Oh, it's definitely sensing that I'm here. As a pit viper, they're famous for having those heat seeking pits and that allows this snake to be able to sense warm-blooded prey that's coming along. And the other thing is how bright yellow this is. That coloration is just one single morph out of a number of different colorations that the eyeless pit viper has found. But what I'm gonna do is just try and get this guy down because it's quite hard to get a close-up look. Gently bringing her down. So this snake is known to be ovoviviparous. So that's a scientific way of saying that there's eggs that actually develop internally and then they actually hatch internally too. So you have live snakes that come out. But I'm a little bit nervous because the snake is calling up my snake hook. Oops. But now you can have a close-up look of that eyelash on the end of that head. Incredible. Nobody quite understands what is the use of the eyelashes. Perhaps one of the main theories is the fact that it actually allows them to blend in. It almost confuses the shape of the head. But other theories include that the fact that the eyelash might be a way of brushing away branches. So if the snake is cruising through the canopy, there will be branches that might stick into the eye and so it might be a way of being able to brush past. It's more likely, in my opinion, that it's used as a way of transforming the shape of their head so it makes it more difficult for the eye to see the snake. I think it's time to say goodbye to this snake. It's starting to rain, getting really, really heavy. Put you back on the tree. Ah, absolutely gorgeous snake. I'm going to say happy hunting to you and eyelash pit viper, yes.